everybody. All right, this is Chris Morrow at Comic-Con at Home, and I'm at the gas lamp trolley station. How's it going? Good. Great. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> you don't mind introducing yourselves and telling us where your home is. Sure, I'm Eric Calmborn, been teaching for 15 years in the south side of Chicago. Uh, Michael Jan Francisco, uh, also teaching 15 years, going into year 16, Providence, Rhode Island. Jason Walls, I've been teaching special education for almost 20 years, and uh, I'm also a comic book writer and illustrator, and I live in Minneapolis. I'm Lucy Nisley, I'm a comic author and illustrator, and I live in Chicago. Uh, I'm Ronnell Whitaker, I am an educator and administrator on the south side of Chicago. I'm Lisa Wu, I'm the founder of Mogul Impact, um, marketing and PR firm, and I also work for Magnetic Press. I'm currently in North Carolina, but I live in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so how did your panel go? What did people ask you? Well, we took, we, what we did is, since we couldn't do it live, we sent the word out to social media through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and just collected a ton of questions from teachers, librarians, and just fans of the medium that wanted to know all things from, you know, how the artists and creators thought about the fans while they were creating them up until how do you, how do you teach them in the classroom and how do you deal with administration that may have a problem with the books you teach. So we were all over the board with the questions we got. They were pretty cool. We didn't even get to all of them. Yeah, I'd say that I, I, I wish it could have gone on for another couple hours and gotten a little more casual because I happened to, uh, I listened to it just now and um, those were some really good questions. I think we just barely got into it. So uh, see you all tomorrow. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got into it a lot more um, after the panel. <laughs> we were discussing all the different books and actually showing and sharing pictures from the different comics that we recommended as well. And what comics and do you questions... recommend? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I forgot what <laughs> we ended rough. up. I remember so many of the panelists stealing ideas that I was going to use. <laughs> but at the very end, I could only come up with one, um, which was Ballad of Yaya, which is actually published by Magnetic Press. Um, it's about um, two kids um, in uh, Shanghai during the Japanese invasion of Shanghai, a long, long time ago before World War II. And um, it's a beautifully illustrated book that was created by French artists and writers that we actually translated into English. But then also, I, sh I after the panel, I shared um, with everybody a few books from my publisher, like Mr. Invincible and things like that, which actually is going to go on second printing and it came out today. <laughs> so. uh, I, I wanted to make sure I, I recommended uh, Cardboard Kingdom. Uh, it's a great kind of all ages uh, title about kind of being ex accepting yourself um, and, and never letting go of your youthful storytelling kind of energy. And uh, one that I personally teach with a lot is I Kill Giants. Um, th that's yeah. the one that's been really effective for high school kids as well. That was one of the make books that Michael recommended me a while ago, like a couple of years ago. Oh, so. yeah. We want to make sure we recommend both Lucy and Jason's books. Um, Lucy's new book, and I, I know it came up in the panel, Stepping Stones, which is like uh, a really great YA book, uh, coming of age book. And Jason's uh, uh, working on book three, right, of Last Pick, which is a science fiction yeah. uh, YA science fiction series, both of which are really good. Yeah, and Eric just held them up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I. I also recommended George Takei's um, They Called Us Enemy, uh, which I'm actually going to be teaching um, this year, come this school year coming up. I have a class set that we're going to be teaching for the first time. Yeah. So uh, I've got a question for you guys. Go ahead. Um, but you want to go ahead and I'll ask yeah. the question yeah. after? Go right ahead. So how do you get kids excited about reading? Um, do you start with the comic books? Do you start with, I mean, is there a certain age where you can really get their attention and get them to start reading, especially during, you know, this, this at home right now? 
I mean, I, I will jump in on this. I have, I have two, two young kids, and um, I think the greatest thing that happened to literature is Captain Underpants, if I'm being honest. I mean, <laughs> my kids love it, and they can't, they can't stop talking about it or reading it and making their own sort of fan fiction for it. Um, it's made us getting our kids excited about reading so easy. So I think having those gateway books around that are just Having a variety of gateway books around that are just unbelievably fun is a great way to get started. Yeah. I would say in my classroom, the biggest thing was making sure kids had access to as many books as they could choose from. Giving them the opportunity to choose and not just being prescriptive, I think was the best thing I could do. And then also kind of modeling for them that, you know, I thought their reading was cool. So when I started teaching with um, Ultimate Spider-Man a while ago, um, it kind of model for them that I thought that this was an important book so they could get into it too. And that translated to later in my, my class when we started reading more challenges texts like uh, August Wilson's Fences. 100% agree with Ronald there. Choice is paramount. Yeah, it needs to be something that the kids themselves value and enjoy. Um, otherwise you'll be forcing them to read and nobody likes being forced to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tell me a couple of other questions that that you had wanted to answer during the panel that that, that hadn't been asked. Oh man, I, I, have my, I don't have my notes on me. I left, they're upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of what what we didn't get to uh, from the from the list. I mean, we got to the point where towards the end, I was con combining like two or three questions into one to get to get <clears throat> a little bit of voice on each of those questions. But I mean. I think honestly, we could have probably just gone for an extra hour just talking about titles, um, just giving teachers titles. We have a, this is a great group of people that has such a, a, a diverse experience with graphic novels. And I've already gotten two tweets from people that say that said, can you give me the list of all of the books that the people on the panel have mentioned? So I'm gonna do that over the next couple of days, which is I'm gonna make a, a comprehensive list of all the titles we mentioned and kind of throw it up on social media for people. I think one of the things we, we touched base, we touched on that we could talk a little more about if we have a minute now, uh, particularly Lucy and Jason would be like the creative side of making books uh, and whether or not, I know we, we kind of talked a little bit, how, how you target or whether it, you, you think about schools when you're writing and creating these books. So, I mean, we started that. I don't think we got as far as I would have liked because I wanted to hear more from Lucy and Jason on that. Sure. I'm, uh, the book that I'm working on now is the sequel to Stepping Stone. So the first one is about um, dealing with divorce and changing family dynamics. And I really wanted to make a story that was about sort of controlling what you can control and finding, uh, finding a kind of a still point in the madness. So it's pretty applicable to what's going on now for a lot of kids. And the sequel is, um, is dealing with the same character's struggles in a chaotic school situation. And um, as somebody who struggled with learning disabilities when I was a kid and struggled with um, uh, teachers that didn't really approve of the way that my mind worked, which often involved doodling during class, I wanted to get that book in the classroom, get a book where it shows alternate ways of learning and alternate ways the kids um, come about understanding in the classroom in the book that teachers can present to students to try and introduce this thing where it's like not everybody learns by reading not everybody learns by copying off the board some people learn while listening and drawing at the same time mm -hmm. yeah i'll uh, i'll jump in on that and just say that uh, um i think lucy and i sort of are thinking of the same way um my books are definitely about that too uh, uh, how how young people um, encounter the world, it can be really different from one to another, how they learn, how they interact socially. So um, I think as a creator, what's on my mind, any responsible creator, I think is, is thinking, what do we want to put into the heads of young people when they're reading our books? So um, I think if, you, if you're thinking about that and you're being thoughtful about what you want young people to think about and talk about in the classroom, um, it kind of guides you the way you want to go. Um, if you if you find yourself getting irresponsible and you're not you don't have the, the young, uh, you don't have young people's best interest at heart you're off you're you're, you're a little off and need to head back to, to to the drawing board. Yeah, I totally agree with um, Jason and Lucy. When I was a teacher, it was a different time. It was the early two thousands, and um, comic books weren't exactly accepted by the administration as a you know a real teaching tool. 
for kids to learn to become better readers, um, comprehend a little bit better with the combination of the art and the text together. It's amazing um, how much kids can understand the, 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 the text better um, with that. And Ronell is an administrator and he was talking about how amazing he is <laughs> with his students and, and what books that he allows to be in the library, which is amazing. And when, when you have thoughtful creators like Lucy and Jason, it just makes the teacher's lives and the librarian's lives a lot easier to be able to present these books and take it to the administrator and be like, hey, this is valuable to our students, this is why. Well, that's great. Well, thank you guys for your time. Um, I appreciate the interview. And I'm Chris Morrow, remotely connecting from the Gas Line Trolley Station. This year, we miss you and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody.